nuclear fission. Let's examine in this lecture. One very common and important type of nuclear reaction is the nuclear fission reaction. Now, nuclear fission is a nuclear reaction in which a neutron essentially collides or smashes into the nucleus of some unstable atom. And as a result of this collision, that neutron combines with that nucleus and this destabilizes that nucleus. As a result of the increase in instability and energy of that nucleus, that nucleus then dissociates or breaks down into two fragments, two atoms that are roughly of equal mass. In addition, several neutrons are essentially released into the surroundings as a result of the nuclear fission process. Now to see exactly what we mean, let's consider the following example. So, in this example, we basically have the uranium-235 isotope and we have a single neutron that collides into that nucleus, forming this combined nucleus we call the compound nucleus. So, this compound nucle nucleus basically increases in energy, destabilizing this structure and as a result of this destabilizing effect, it essentially fissions or breaks down into the following two atoms. So we have the Ba atom as well as the Krypton atom and in the process several neutrons are released into the surroundings as free neutrons. So the intermediate atom formed is so unstable and so high in energy that it generally exists for a very short period of time, about 10 to negative 12 seconds. And this implies that because this exists for a very short period of time, these reactions, the nuclear fission reactions, take place very quickly. Now, the question is, what exactly or how can we explain the instability of this compound nucleus? So, scientists came up with a model known as the liquid drop model that basically explains the instability of this compound nucleus and explains why and how nuclear fission reactions actually take place. So basically, according to this model, when the neutron collides with the nucleus, it is absorbed by that nucleus along with the energy that our neutron carries. Now this collision basically increases the energy of all the nucleons, the protons in, and the neutrons inside the nucleus and this changes the shape of the entire nucleus. In fact, it elongates that nucleus. Now, since strong nuclear forces only act over very short distances, and because the distances between the nucleons increases as a result of this elongation process, as shown in diagram B, we see that there is a decrease in the strong nuclear attractive forces that exist between the nucleons and which hold those nucleons in place. So, as a result of the decrease in the attractive forces, there is an increase in the electrical repulsive forces between the protons in the nucleus. And these electrical repulsive forces basically overpower and dominate over the strong nuclear forces and as a result the nucleus separates or fissions in the same way that a biological cell fissions during reproduction. So that that's why we call this type of process nuclear fission. So basically, the liquid drop models imagines that the nucleus of our atom, in this case the uranium, is like a single water drop. And when this neutron collides and smashes into the water drop, it basically increases the internal energy of that water in the same way that when we heat the water, the water begins to increase in energy and essentially elongates as 
shown in diagram B. Now, as it elongates, the strong nuclear forces holding the nucleons along the edges together decrease, and the electrical forces that repel the nucleons, the protons in our nucleus, basically overpower these strong nuclear forces, and they repel our protons, and so it causes our nucleus to essentially separate or fission in the same way that a water droplet or a biological cell would fission. And in the process, it basically produces two fragments as well as several neutrons as shown in diagram B. So, basically, in nuclear fission reactions, the mass of the products that is formed is usually much less than the mass of the reactants. And that means, as we go from the reactant to the product side in a nuclear fission reaction, we have a decrease in mass that is taking place. And because we have a decrease in mass, we know that will basically release a lot of energy Energy. And so, nuclear fission reactions are generally exothermic reactions. And finally, let's discuss the chain reaction that exists inside nuclear fission. So let's suppose in this particular case we have a bunch of uranium-235 isotopes floating around in space. And we have only a single neutron. Now when that neutron collides with one of those available uranium-235 atoms, it will create a nuclear fission reaction which will form many more neutrons. And then these neutrons can further combine or collide with the other available uranium-235 atoms and that will lead to many more nuclear fission reactions. And generally, this process, this domino effect, will basically lead to a self-sustaining chain reaction of nuclear fission reactions. So once again, the neutrons produced in a single nuclear fission reaction can collide with the other unstable atoms leading to other fission reactions and this process can create a self-sustaining chain of nuclear fission reactions. And in the process, a lot of energy can be released and if that energy can actually be harvested to the useful work, we see that nuclear fission can actually provide us with a very usable form of energy. Usable. Usable. <laughs>